<laughs> All right. We are live, 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 live. Hey, say hello. Say hello. Hello, I'm Garrett. I'll say hello first. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and uh, welcome to the Wednesday evening CNC Business Hour, where we are doing some mentoring with Kate and in the process trying to give you the guidance as well to start a CNC business or to know what you need to do to get that business going in the right way. And so that's what these Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time lives are all about, and they will show up on the YouTube channel, IDC Woodcraft YouTube channel. Let's see, can I point the right side this time? Yeah, I got it. And uh, also CNC Entrepreneurs and in my personal Facebook feeds. So who do we got here? Oz is there, Jack in the shop. What's going on? We got Doug and Dion. Hey, Dion, I just shipped something to you again. I think you're gonna like the little note I left you on the on the envelope. Um, Chris and uh, Facebook user, hey Garrett. Uh, sometimes, <clears throat> hey, there's Chris Croft. What's going on, brother? Chris is Chris Croft. CNC brothers and sisters. Chris Croft is like this technical genius. I mean, he gets to talking, and your your head's going because I mean he's just a, he's he's got some stuff in there that. That uh, he could probably build a rocket ship and take us to Mars. Um, <clears throat> v Twin, you're there, and Dario. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna kind of uh, um, get rolling on this. So this is episode six with Kate Tucker, one of our CNC sisters, who has uh, come to me and asked me for some business guidance. She's been a friend for quite a while, and uh, so uh, she's been working through. Her, biz, her CNC business. She'll give you her little elevator speech in a minute. And uh, so now we're trying to get her off in the right direction. Not trying. She came to me because she's got, she's on a mission. And and uh, that's what we do. When we want to really succeed, we get on a mission and we will find the resources we need to have to, in order to make our businesses take off. And uh, it, it I have a mentor. Now she's asked me to mentor her, right? Success, business success requires mentoring. If you truly want the success, you go find the people that have succeeded to where you want to be and you go ask them for guidance. Okay, who else we got? Uh, you're welcome, Chris. Brian and Russell. Um, oh, so you got the stick figures, huh, Dion? Okay, and uh, Darren. Okay, we're going to bring Kate in and uh and there's dave okay kate i'm gonna pop you in sister hey. so hello you are live so uh this is kate for those of you who are joining in and i'll share this again um so like i just said this is mentoring to help you uh we're helping kate <coughs> to build a business <coughs> kate wants success she's hungry for it Right. And, and that's what it takes when you, you got to have the hunger. And uh, but at the same time, we got to help you guys, too. And that's in Kate's heart to help other people. So so, Kate, why don't you give your your quick two minute like you usually do. Introduce yourself and <laughs> why you're why you're here, what you do. Sure. So my name is Kate Tucker. I own Rise and Shine Wood Signs. I had a very successful uh, craft business that I was very, very much enjoyed. But as many of you know, um, wood signs really took over the home market. They just really oversaturated the market. And so I had a craft uh, business where I did DIY sign kits. And I also did um, like big, just big wooden signs that I wanted to sell. But what I noticed is my sales were starting to decrease. So what I did was I actually bought a Onefinity Journeyman X50, uh, the biggest one that they had. I knew nothing about CNC. And I started changing up the way I was making my signs to give them a different, unique look like, of course, CNCs can. So that's what I did. And um, I've been doing it for about a year, actually a little over a year, almost a year and a half now. And I am to the point now in my business where I really want to elevate and I want to maybe pivot a little bit. And that's where I talked to Garrett about doing mentoring, which has been so amazing because it's opened so many more doors for me than I ever thought possible. So 
that's where I'm at right now. And you guys get to join me for that process every Wednesday. So thanks for tuning in. All right. Okay. So what we're going to talk about, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about today uh, is the why starting a business feels hard and actually uh, some of the things that we actually do to ourselves to, to sabotage ourselves and what we need to do to get moving. Right. So but before right. we dive into that, Kate, we've been doing this, this is the sixth time. So what are some of the things yeah. in the previous sessions that you have picked up that have given you some light bulb moments that you can oh, share goodness. with other people? Well, I would say, um, so most recently working backwards, um, I would say the avatar work was extremely essential essential for me. I've even listened to um, several other business podcasts, and it seems so evident that everything that you are telling me is exactly what they are saying. Um, you've taught me about my market, um, who I need to be marketing to, what type of products I need to be making, and my avatar, the avatar work of who I want to target. Because what I've learned is when you're trying to sell to everyone, you're essentially selling to no one. So those are some of the bigger staples. And then also my niche and bringing, like, like I said before, I think in like episode four or five, I was like six miles wide. And now I'm really starting to narrow in and cornering my market and figuring out what, what the problem is and how to solve that problem. And that's what I'm working on. So, okay. <clears throat> All right, cool. And what, yeah. what do you see now that you didn't see then that, let me rephrase this question. Looking back based on the, some of the expansion <laughs> you've had in your head, uh, yeah. where do you see the, uh, you were struggling in your business? What? Um, so I would say I'm struggling with letting go of what I knew and what I know how to do. Um, and then trying to pivot into a new a new area that I'm not 100% familiar with. I'm still very familiar with the information and then the content that would go into that platform, but it's a very uncomfortable situation for me to try and figure out how to do that. So there's this major like fear holding me back. Um and that's essentially that's where I'm at. I don't like to do things that are uncomfortable and that I don't know how to do, but I look at it in my perspective, not only in business, but I kind of look at it like parenting as well, because these businesses are our babies, they're our kids. And we have to grow. If we're not growing with them, then we're just creating a problem for ourselves. We have to expand our, our thinking and our knowledge in even with parents, we have to read books. We have to listen to podcasts. We have to talk to other parents. We have to figure out how to manage this thing <laughs> that we're that we're that we're growing into a high functioning person of society. So, and that's what I want for my business. And so that's why I'm doing all of this. Okay, cool, cool. You just said two things <clears throat> that that really relates to what we're going to be talking about today, uh, which is why Good. it feels so hard. And um, First of all, I've said this many times, all businesses up here, right? And, yeah. and you're starting to see, you see that, that what, what, what we have to do in order to get a business is we have to expand our context and be willing to change some of the ways that we think, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes people will say we actually have to change who we are. And depending on the level that you want to get, you actually have to do that. All right, and it's, it doesn't yeah. change you as a core fundamental person. It's just we have to change uh, our, our thinking. It requires awareness of how our, we're thinking, mindfulness. Um, yes. So you said letting go was a challenge, and you also uh, talked about getting uncomfortable, which are both kind of the same thing, uh, letting go yeah. of, of uh, things. So what are you finding that you're having to let go? Go of. Well, so here recently, I've been struggling with letting go of my paint party business. I have been doing this paint party business for a long time, and I know how to do it. I could do it. I could. I could pack everything I need in my sleep. Like I know what I'm doing. 
I can make the signs. I can go to the parties. I can teach them. Um, not a problem, not a problem. But as I was telling you, I was trying to figure out, is this what I want to, is this what I want to do long, long term? Because I'm constantly in a phase of, I have to have people come to me, come to me, come to me. It's, you know, and we moved from Northern. That's with your paint. Yeah. Yeah. We moved from Northern Indiana to Indianapolis. And so when I relocated it, like, uh, sorry. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Sorry. I'm so sorry. You guys, normally my dog is like so quiet. Um, My son is tapping on my shop window telling me he's going to light a fire because he's camping outside tonight. So (laughs) (laughs) this is real life right here. So sorry. Um, Anyhow, I'm struggling letting go of my paint parties because A, it takes up, it's, it's what I know and it's what I love. That's the short answer. That's the very short answer of it. Um, But I also have to do what's best for my family and what's best for me. And with my children growing, I'm busy, busy, busy during the day and then taking care of my home and taking care of our um, kids and everything else. I'm finding less time to actually be physically be in the shop. And then on top of that, it's all my weekends are tied up. Um, I mean, think about when people, when do people want to do parties? They want to do them in the evenings. They want to do them on Saturdays. They want to do them Saturday night. They want to do Sundays. That's my time with my family. I mean, my husband travels, he's home on the weekends. So if I'm gone all weekend, that really doesn't align with my family values. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, that that's a really good point because you just nailed another pain point as to why you know why you want to uh, change directions. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Now we were talking this week. You, you we had a little conversation as you were dealing <laughs> with your basement disaster, and yeah, yes. uh, and uh, Kate Kate's basement flooded with uh, some of the heavy rains that we had. So twice, twice. <laughs> Twice it was a uh, nightmare. Yeah. Um, so you talked about um, kind of the, the paint party thing and and what have you. Just talk a little bit about what that what that struggle is. Just well, like I said, the struggle with just the the paint party is it it takes a lot of time to do it. So. I have two currently on the books coming up right before Mother's Day and one party is like 30 people. Um, The pain part of it is I love it. That's that's what's hard for me is I really love it because it's a connection for me with other women. Um, It's and it's it sparks all my creativity. It's absolutely what I love to do. It's been my goal to have a paint party business, to have a shop. Um, here a couple summers ago, my husband and I actually built this shop that we have. It's a 15 by 30. And then it's got the, like this 10 by 10 extension, little like square added onto it. And that was what we built. Like that was the dream. Have my paint parties come to me. So I'm not traveling, you know, do some add-ons, do some other fun stuff. And it's, it's letting go of that dream. It's like pivot. And that's where it's, it sucks. It's hard because like that was the goal. And now I'm like, I have the building. I have everything I need to have these successful business. And I'm finding myself with very little time. So it sucks. It's hard. Yeah. So, so the, when, when we were talking about it, you know, it's, um, yeah. The thought that came through my head when when we were talking was something I shared with you that my mentor told me, right? And because you know that I am getting ready to pivot this business, and mm-hmm. and it's going to cause some changes that are going to be really uncomfortable for me too, because I have to do some letting go. Um, I'm not going to share what that is at the moment, but uh, it's a yeah. uh, it's pretty significant changes. And uh, my mentor said it's fear of failure, right? Um, and it yeah. took a while to figure it out. And I thought about it today after we talked. And it's mm-hmm. really what, what he said behind that. He said, 
it's because before when I started the business, I didn't have anything to lose. Now I have something to lose if I pivot yeah. and it'll, it'll lose, it will lose like you, you'll, you're going to lose your paint party uh, stuff. That's your social life. That's, that's the, yeah. the thing that, you know, but you also said earlier, a lot of connections, that, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you also said it, it's not that you have to give it up, but the thing is in, now this is not necessarily cnc project related but this is more towards uh kate and for, towards you in general is mm -hmm. to go in the direction you want to go you want time freedom right you, 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 your your time is not aligned with your family time and and so right. you have you know the, the way to do that is to strategize so that you can build something that's going to uh, create more automated income Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because and, the paint parties are, they're great and they're a great source of revenue. I mean, because if each sign is 40 bucks and I've got, um, I don't know, 30 people, you know, I mean, it creates a substantial amount of revenue for a couple of hours of time. But that's where I get all like in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, it was just a couple of hours of time to make that. But it's not actually so let me just give you a little bit of background on that um, statement. So for instance, I was looking at my email thread from the time this lady first reached out to me and I have 27 emails with her, 27 emails about where's it going to be? What's it going to be? How, how old are the age of the participants? Like all the questions. And then she wants to know, you know, other things and this and that. And um, so last night I said, okay, we finalized the designs. I built the flyer. I got everything. I sent it to her. I'm like, yes, finally, I'm done. I can just relax. Well, she emailed me tonight and she said, can we add some more Bible type signs? I'm like, <sighs> you know, so now it's like if I come up with two other designs then I have to recreate the flyer and then I have to resend that to her and it's all this backwards time plus creating 30 signs prepping all the stuff to take there the time to drive. It's a lot of effort mm -hmm. um, to do, to do that. So I'm just, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. like any business. It's a lot, but it's not. The other thing is, is if I have custom designs, like I do a lot of parties and that's why the parties have been so popular is because I can create custom designs for certain like monogram things for people to paint and they're one off designs. It's not something that I can repeat or reuse. So then right. after that's done, I'm like, OK, back to square one. And as many designs as I have on my website, people always want something personalized. It never fails. It's like just how it is right so with the sign business you're selling your time and you, oh, you yeah. know even though it's 40 dollars a sign and about 750 dollars you know a, a party right it's it, it, it's you know you have your, the equipment the supplies your time uh, um the, the the beverages the snacks whatever it may be right yeah, and, all and of it. so and, and so i mean if you really start racking up those numbers and really accounting for it, then you might find yourself 10 bucks an hour. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done that before with parties and I'm like, Oh God, this is like, this is exhausting. Why am I even doing this? And right. so that's why when I got the CNC, I thought, well, I could up the ante and charge more for the signs, which has been great for custom work. But as far as paint parties, I can't really, I can't raise that price too much because People just aren't willing to pay it. That's the market research that I've done. People are not willing to pay more than, you know, 60 bucks a piece. Mm. Right. So. so kind of on that note to all who are here and wanting to start a CNC business, making and selling projects. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. One of the things is to, we, we talked about products last week and the week before we talked about avatars. Right. The, the, the other thing you want to work on is uh, standardization. This is why you want to get into a niche. So you just make a few products. You can cookie cutter them out and, and, and 
you know, maybe add a little bit of personalization that you can have standardized. So all you have to do is change some text and laser burn something in and what have you. So, so this is the, the way you want to approach your business. That's why you want to get to study niches and avatars at the same time rather than diving in and, and just making something that you think is cool. I did briefly mentor a couple uh, about a year and a half ago, and, and they made – they, they had this product. They were just so stuck on it, and and there there was no market for it. They just liked it, right? And and so they're trying to sell them, and it's like uh, trying to. Yeah. We have to. <clears throat> the first thing is when when it comes to this, okay, on on nature of this note of why it feels hard is we first have to become open to to. Uh, realizing that there is a different way of thinking and so we have to get we have to be willing to try to pull down our own filters each of us has our own psychological makeup and in that makeup we see the world with certain color filters or certain <laughs> attitudes and what have i mean i put out a video yeah. last night based on based on a, a very particular type of person which we talked about a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the negative nanny, you know, the naysayer, the, the one who who wants to see that they did. They, they don't want to see their natural tendency. Their character makeup is to find fault before they find uh, good. So the positive. Yeah. And so the, the whole thing within them is <clears throat> what's in them comes out, how the, who they are. It, it's really yeah. who they are. Right. And um, um, people that are that locked down are will not expand. They, they just can't. They're too, they're too, too, too blocked. Right. Yeah. But for, for if you want to start a business, you have to be willing to say, I don't know something and I have to be willing to learn. And we have to go yeah. learn from people that have done it. Now, I'm going to pull up a picture because <laughs> this this kind of just came to me. So I'm going to find it. And um, and then uh, just give me a second here. No, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Here we go. Let's see if I can just do this, and let's see if I can bring that up. If I can share. So what I want to do is I want to bring up an image, and 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 I want snap feelings not just from you but i want it from from those who are watching and by the way those who are watching uh first of all let's see some thumbs up if you feel like you've been getting something out of this right now kate there are 68 cnc brothers and sisters watching us right now so awesome. we a very very cool audience and uh, what yeah. we got, uh mark and gary and and let's say hi to russell paul um okay so what I want from everyone is, as soon as I can get this, uh, I gotta try to. Where's my share screen? Uh, I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, present. Oh, there's share screen. And so, what I want from when I bring it up, I want it, I want snap feelings, no filtering. Right, because because uh, uh, that's just what I want. So let's you do this to me all the time. So yeah, I'm cool. yeah. So uh, come on, come on, baby. Okay, there it is. Here we go. All right, can you see that? <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Okay, snap feelings. Snap feelings. Be honest. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Um. Same confidence. in the comments. Same in the comments. Snap feelings. Yeah. Keep going. It's just like, what are you like? What are you thinking? What are you doing? Um, yes. Are you asking me or what, what? What do you mean? No, just the pictures. The pictures that I'm seeing, mm -hmm. like his different reactions, like the top left corner. He's like, what? He, he's listening. He's trying to like soak it in. He's just very. Um. Yeah, I like power. Tammy. <laughs> okay, I want to see. I want to see. Nope. 
it's just some of the uncertainty. Okay, thumbs down. Uh, wish I had no idea what that is. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. So the reason I pulled that up, right? It's really strange. Like, why the hell did Garrett just do that? Yeah, I was going to say that was like totally not what I was expecting. Right, right, right. So, so the reason I brought that up, okay, and why I said snap feelings, not just from you, but from everyone, okay? Yeah. Uh, because we're talking about mindset right now. And, mm -hmm. and this, uh, there's comments, stubborn. Okay. What if I brought up a picture of a Lamborghini or a Ferrari? What's the feeling? Expensive, custom, money, power, jealousy. Like you want, you want it. Right. Okay. Because some people are immediately like when, so uh, the reason I pulled up such a, a figure that is, you know, it creates such tension. Um, oh, is yes. Because in the world of business, in order to be successful, right? We can't, we have to look at those who are successful. We, we, we have to take our, our anger or hatred for people don't like anybody who's successful. If they see someone cruising by in a Ferrari and going, oh, that's some 30 something guy trying to, trying to solve his ego problem, right? It's only a reflection of how we see the world. So, uh, yeah. I just showed you a man who was a billionaire, made presidency in the strangest of ways, but he got there, right? Yeah. Regardless of my own personal feelings about who he is and his character, I, as a business owner, want to know what was in there that has made him with a billionaire mindset. Yeah. Right? So we, we, yeah. we, we always have to look at, at things like, uh, uh, uh uh, the reason I'm saying this is because if we have to be aware, if we see if we see success and we have a negative attitude towards it, then yeah. we then then we will not have success. Period. That's just what it comes down to. You will not yeah, have success. Absolutely. You will not have success if you look at any levels of success above you and you and you look down on it. Right. Yeah. No, I'm always like, tell me everything. As when I see somebody driving a an expensive car or like you said, like a Lamborghini or any other type of expensive vehicle. My, my first thought is what do they do? Like, mm -hmm. what are they doing in their life that is making them so successful? I know it's going to sound totally ridiculous to even say out loud, but you see some of these YouTubers, um, you know, and they're like, you're like, I'm making $10,000 a month. And you're like, what are you doing to make $10,000 a month? My mind doesn't go to, oh, I don't like them. Or I'm, my mind might wander off like, oh, I'm like totally jealous of them because I want to be them. I would love to be that someone that makes 10 grand a month. Right. Doing whatever it is they're doing. And they're 25. I'm like. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and, and so, it, it, yep. It, and it's all in their mindset. It's, it's in a mindset yeah. that they, they have a, a, a 10, 10 K a month mindset, right? They so, do. uh, the, the CNC brothers and sisters who are watching right now, the reason we are not, you know, we, we I'm, I'm going to assume most that are here are, are in a place where they've pivoted in life, right? They've gone into retirement or, or, yes. uh, are looking for a change in life because they're not happy. Yes. Right. Um, and so now we're stepping into a new world that we don't necessarily understand. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. business is business is business. It all works the same way. Right. It doesn't matter what business you get into. It's just how you work in it. But it all starts up here again. Right. So yeah. so so why why it feels so hard to start a business is because we are not used to it. You said it's uncomfortable. We have to we have to be start realizing yeah. we have to let go. We have to uh, allow ourselves to start to be receptive to 
and you do that, Kate. That's that's we've been talking for a long time now. You approach me. You say, yeah. "I'm ready, Garrett." Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you've yeah. and you you've been diving in. You've gotten vulnerable in that. So this is uh, kind of for everybody else as well. Very much so. It, the results that we get, the results in our life right now, um, financially, is simply a result of how we think and how we've thought in the past. So if we want different results, we have to think differently. That's why my favorite quote from Albert is from Albert Einstein. You can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. So wherever you're at in life and you're not happy with the, with the, with the results you have right now, or if your business is not performing or you don't know how to start a business, basically that's because the mind doesn't know how to solve that problem. So you have, and, and because of the filters that we have, uh, mm -hmm. we can't solve that problem until yeah. we, ch until we change. But when I go to events with my mentor, right. And just say, so you know, I mean, it ten, you know, it, yeah. by the time I'm done with a three day event, I've spent $10,000. Right. That's a lot of I fly, I fly first class. I stay at first class places. Right. Um, That's we fun. Have first, first class meals and the events cost uh, a lot and that we're dressed to the nines. Right. But yeah. I am willing to create the environment for myself that puts me in that feeling and, and mm -hmm. proximity to to success or automatically kind of draws you that way. OK, yeah. so so. So one of the things with you is you just stated about. And we'll get to comments here in a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, you want to hold on to the paint parties and and, and you right. want to hold on to them because because we, we see a little bit of fun in them, right? You know I mean, but they're comfortable. Sure, you, yeah. You, you, you could put a paint party together in your sleep, right? And yes. That, that means that you've plateaued and and and, and mm -hmm. so your business is plateaued. You've now realized your, 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 your time is tied to your business. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and you're dependent on them coming to you where you want to position yourself where, yeah. uh, where they come to you when they're ready, but you don't have to be there. All right. That's why I create yes. the videos that I, that's why I create the videos I create because I know yeah. there's people are constantly getting into this. So they'll make videos that, that the stuff that they're looking for. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, and I will I will add to that. I mean, back in 20, 2018, 2019 is kind of when I started it. Um, but 2020 was hard. I mean, like it was really exceptionally hard because my whole business model was getting together with your friends and family. That was what the whole thing was. And so that's when I kind of pivoted um, to doing DIY kits. And those are like, what are on my website? And that's what's on my Etsy shop. And it really created a lot of, I created a lot of momentum behind those. And then people were loving those and doing that. Um, but I had to really like almost recreate the wheel because I had to put every single detail of how you create a sign into a DIY kit, which was fine. Cause once it was done, it was done. Um, but then it was different because then I had my CNC and then I transitioned all of my stencil signs into a carved sign. So then I kind of had to recreate it again. And by, by then I'm just like, God bless. I'm just, I'm just tired. Like I'm just I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. I'm just, you know, and people are so picky and it doesn't matter what designs you want. Like we talked about this with this, these lady that had the three, I sent her three designs. I, I actually sent her a whole collection and then she picked these three and now she wants something else. And it's just, you know, it, it gets to be, it gets to be a lot. Right. Right. So, you know, now I have something where I'm like, I want to build something a little more sustainable. That's going to last me. I just create it once and then I'm done mm -hmm. or not necessarily done, but done with that that's being going on right right so so and that falls into uh the creators right like i said before you, you get your niche get your customer your your avatar and then you know what they want yeah. these create based products so before Absolutely. we go on uh here's one other thing about businesses right you you, mm -hmm. you you calls to action right so we're gonna do a little call to yes. action here right first of all kate has a youtube channel 
It's called Rise and Shine Wood Signs. So go go see her. She's she's working on trying to make videos. She's learning that it takes a lot yeah. of work. We're working on that one, and she's trying to figure out <laughs> how to do that more efficiently, All right? Yes. Uh, and the reason I say it is YouTube videos are out there forever, right? So if you if you if YouTube yeah. videos built the right way, I'll say this: all social media has two sides. It's got the consumer the consumer side and it's got the business side right so yes. you, you want to yeah. always approach social media from the business side if you want to grow a business right so yeah, um uh, subscribe to her channel if you're watching this on youtube or cnc entrepreneurs if you're not in mm -hmm. cnc entrepreneurs facebook group sign up to that it's a uh, facebook it's a great group yep look cnc entrepreneurs awesome people in there and of course, yes. on the IDC Woodcraft YouTube channel, subscribe to that if you feel like you can get some value out of that or been getting some value out of it. Also, if you are a female creator, right? Kate's, 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 Kate's the man, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kate's the woman. Right, right, right. Kate's the, tell, Kate's tell, the woman. Tell them where they got to go. Uh, so on Facebook, I have a really great group. It is called Women Who See and See. And has Garrett has told me over and over and over, um, it is it is just for women. Don't be mad at yourself that that's what that's for. It's for women only. And if you're a man, I'm sorry. I'm right. sorry. I'm working on a different platform for to add you all in. But for this particular group, it's just for women who see and see. Um, it's just we speak a different language sometimes, and it's just a safe space for us to ask those dingbat questions we not, may not feel comfortable asking on a such a huge platform um in very large groups with very seasoned c and c or so right and That's another what it is. and another thing is so one of the things we always also talked about is uh today we talked about it right about finances we were yeah. talking you need to get some cash flowing through right so last week we said yep. start some one-on-one -on -one. so kate is opening yeah. herself up to doing one-on-one -on -one. she's gotten quite well versed at the vectric software and so yep. she can help you out and even some of the uh the processing right so so she yeah. got some of that down and so you can contact her what's what's your email um, so I'll be sure to put it in the show notes as well, but it's rise and shine DIY wood signs with an S on the end at gmail.com. Okay. So I know it's a long email. When I set up my LLC, my attorney looked at me and he was like, are you sure that's the email you want to use? Cause that's very long. Yeah. And I said, yeah, yeah. Rise Probably going to look at shortening it one day. Yeah. Rise and shines DIY signs. Oh. DIY wood signs. Okay. Right. So right. rise and shine DIY for like do it yourself wood right. signs at gmail.com. Okay. You can get yourself a different address that's much shorter and have that one <laughs> redirected into into have the Yeah, it's gonna be something I'm gonna have to do. Yep. Uh, so so but yeah, one... I'm happy to help anybody, not just women with with Vectric. You can definitely reach out for a one on one. I'd be happy to help you. Right. Women and men. Um so, so she's doing it for, uh, she's not giving it away for free, right? We value the other thing, CNC brothers and sisters value your skill, your time. And, and, uh, you have to honor that. Um, right. sometimes we don't know how to value it when we're going into a new space. Right. And this is another thing that, that, that locks us up, right? Part of this mm -hmm. whole thing of why it feels hard. Cause we don't know what our value is yet in the marketplace. So I was yeah. talking to someone today who made a very interesting niche item and he's been messaging me back and forth. He said he only saw one on Etsy and he, so, so the, I got the impression that he wanted to get it on Etsy and I was telling him for the product that he was making, Etsy is not the marketplace he'll bomb, right? He's got to find, because it's a very interesting little niche. And, and so he, he finally put it out in Facebook and he already got two requests to make them. Right, just by putting them out in this Facebook, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so get your stuff out in Facebook, but you really want to be, you, you gotta, you, you can't just take everything and anything. Um, but <laughs> the other thing is why you went into this, the, wanting to go back to this paint party thing, right? Is because you mm -hmm. want to get back to the comfort zone, right? This, it's what we call default, right? Default, yes, default, that's true. Default. Yep, default is a bitch because default 
it's so easy to go back to default because it's comfortable. It's what we know. We have to step yeah. into areas that we don't know. Like you said, we got to grow. Let's uh, yeah. let's see. Finish the calls to action here. So, join Kate's group if you are a female creator, women who CNC Facebook. And, yes, um, please. Yeah, and uh, on my account, right? CNC Insiders, right? I've got some deals on the email list. If you so. I'll try to remember that and get the IDC Woodcraft CNC router bit app because that has all the feeds and speeds in it. Uh, and I got databases on the website for CarveCo, Vectric, Fusion 360, and Carbide Create. Sorry, ESL users. It's a lot. It's helpful. Yeah, ESL users, I'm sorry. We can't do that. All right, let's jump into some comments. I'm going to scroll backwards in time a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think good. That's great. Wow, everybody, uh, thank you all for your comments. Really, I mean, yes, this is cool. thank you. Yeah, um, so I would say, what if we were to start around um, 828? Yeah, Lazio, yeah, okay, uh, um, okay, so <clears throat> I work at a lumber yard and the sales guys are always giving discounts you just shake your head so are you a business or, or a charity and it's, it, it's not a sin to make money absolutely so so th there's something this, this is an interesting thing um to be really aware of we don't we we all have it in some way shape or form and so for for you for everybody's here is uh, this is a brilliant point, right? Are, are you a business or a charity, right? Um, what I want to call yeah. the, the discount mentality. Okay. And so if, if we're always looking for discounts and we're not willing to invest in ourselves uh, for the good things in life, and we're always coupon cutting and, and what have you, then mm -hmm. uh, that, is, that is a lower financial thermostat mindset. Right. And we have to raise that. And it's, it's hard as hell to raise it. Right. For, for yeah. my business, I have a, I have a financial mindset and, and I chart it back here on my board here. And I, for the last six months, it's been staying plat, kind of plateaued. And so I've been talking to my mentor, yeah. my, my dragon group about that. Right. How do I get over that? Um, do you, do you want to share something on this? No, I'm good. I think my thoughts were right. Kind of on track with what you were saying. Okay. And then Russell Ellington, he said, billionaire mindset comes in uh, different ways. I can't and won't uh, rip people off. No, no. The other rule of thumb is you never take advantage of other people, right? But we don't know, right? It, it's, it's not a matter of, so we're talking about Trump here, right? Because they're bringing the pictures up because he's got a billionaire mindset. <laughs> uh, yeah. The first, the, it, it's not about, seeing it that way right this that's looking for the negativity right we need to feel grateful for anyone who has seen success right that's a success mindset and so we have to realize in ourselves that we have to get that stuff out of our way and just be yeah. grateful for the life we have and if we see some mansion up there we have to be grateful for those people i used to see a big house and went, what a waste of money right get a log cabin like i would get right <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, Kate. We'll just uh, see if you can find one that you'd like to uh, kind of jumps out at you. Uh, let's see. So, okay. This is uh, Patrick. Yep, that's where I was. Hey, brother. How's it going? Patrick, uh, he's been around for, for ever since I've been around on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, uh, success means different things to different people. It does not always have to be about large amounts of money. So, yes. all right, all right. So, I went really big on this one, right? I just brought out a, a really big. We're not we're not talking about millionaire mindsets or billionaire mindsets. I'm talking about our, our own mindset. We don't have to be in a billionaire or millionaire mindset. We just have to be aware of where our mindset is at. Yes. So I was. I so I guess a, Patrick, let let if you don't mind. Um, so what I was going to say is for me, when I was talking to Garrett about revenue and bringing money in for my business. So ever since we started this mentoring, I have 
cut way back on my custom orders and what I've been doing. So I'm not spending near as much time in my shop, which is really hard on me um, and also hard on the business bank account because that's where the majority of my revenue was coming from. Also with paint parties, and so I was doing the two, you know, bringing in the bank account, which is fine. But now that I'm not really, I'm kind of trying to back away from both and trying to pivot to where I can grow my business for long term. That's where my mindset is, is how can I still bring in revenue, but not go back to my default of trying to make money, you know, doing all these custom works, because that is taking time away from where I am trying to go in the future. Um, so I agree. I don't think it's all about the money, but it is about wanting to build a profitable and sustainable business model. And maybe that's where. All right. Okay. So let me be going. clear. Yeah. Let me be clear about the money, All right? Money is a byproduct of adding value. And mm -hmm. so in order to add value, we have to be good go givers. At the same token, right. we have to be good receivers. We have to be worth what comes yeah. back to us. All right. And this also comes back to if we are having a result, in our in our CNC business that that we are not mm -hmm. comfortable with that or we feel like we're constantly fighting that's because yeah. of what's going on up here once we change what's going on up here the outside world changes by default because we have now uh, become a different individual in in, in yeah. business mindset right so right. so if, if for those who are, are trying and struggling and and trying to make a buck and it doesn't seem to be working. You don't know what you don't know, right? I would, we're, we all start in that place. Right. And, and, and so that's why we don't spend a lot of time on how do we, how do, what projects are going to sell and, 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 and what have you, because business is, is it, again, it's all up here. And this, again, it goes back to self-awareness, right? Yeah. I'm here. Do I like being here or not? Right? Am I fighting too hard to get to the next level? This is where Kate, you were. You're fighting. Yes. You're fighting really hard, and and so after a while, hard. yeah, and after a while, it becomes really painful, right? And it so does, have, and it almost makes you just want to feel like you just want to give up or give in because you're not. You're just like you're just treading water, and you're just like, screw it, I'm done, you know. But. Right. Um, so who else we got here? Uh, Tim oh, Adams, he said at 829. 829 for who? Tim Adams? Okay. Yep. They're either incredibly in debt or crazily successful. I always ask people questions just to learn how they make money. It's crazy. All the ways people I've met who make money outside of a nine to five. Make money outside of the nine to five. Yeah. Yeah. Most people who yep. make money have their own businesses. So this is, this is one of the things that's awesome here. Uh, we have people, uh, uh, the CNC brothers and sisters and you here that want to start a business that sets you apart from nine to fivers, right? Nine yeah. to fivers, are, are locked in a salary. They're locked in trading their time for money, right? We as CNC creators, we're still in that mindset. We don't realize it when we come out of the workforce and we're trying to build our own business. And believe it's it or hard. not, and that mindset is, when I say mindset, that's kind of a, uh, if, what mindset means is how your mind is fixed and how you see the world, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how you yeah. understand the world works, right? And yeah. so we're in a, it's this, employee mindset or the nine to five mindset and that's what we have to try to break all right so so yes it's, i would agree have, yep and and the other thing about business is building like you mentioned it early on is uh realizing that there we don't have to make money on one thing right so i, 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 yeah. I want to stop uh, and i want to come back to this money thing again where um money isn't where I hear sometimes money's not that important. Money doesn't buy happiness. And 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 that's not a true statement. 
money is really important and it does buy happiness it doesn't but it doesn't <laughs> change you to make you a happier person it just expands no. who you are so if you are a butthead and you get rich you're just a bigger butthead right you with have more, more money right with more money right but um yeah. um but money is is important as love and family relationships because if we don't have the right. money we have too much attention focused on money and yeah right and so that takes up bandwidth and and it does money buys us comfort right so money's not about happiness yeah. it's about giving us comfort and it gives us see the driver for my money is wanting to be able to spend more time with my family and take more vacations and not work like a crazy person all the time just to make a buck I want to build a sustainable business model that I can create and then it will continue to grow. Not only just within that, but also adding things to help others as well. So there are a ton of ways you could make money outside of that nine to five. So I agree. Yep. yep. There are a ton of ways. Like I, I've got what, 16, 16 streams of income in IDC Woodcraft. All right. Six. Yeah. That's 16. what I, I was telling my dad about that the other day. Yeah. Right. I mean, some of them are just, you know, a few dollars, but it's still a stream of income. Yeah. All right. And, and I'm always associate, working. Um, uh, affiliates. I mean, oh, gosh. And I'm always, always working to add more, right? You know what? The, the, but I don't get the fulfillment from that. I get the comfort of having a successful business, my personal ambition. But what gives me the biggest fulfillment is when I get thank yous from creators for, for helping them, right? Yeah. When I can write to, uh, next month, early next month, as soon as this month is done and I got the finances figured out, I'm writing a $7,000 check to St. Jude from IDC Woodcraft. That's incredible. Right. <laughs> this That's is, this, so incredible. Uh, right. So this is, this is the freedom that money gives you. Right. And so we have to be willing to to shift out of that money doesn't make you happy. It's not about happiness. It's about uh, uh, giving us a freedom. It, there's a certain sense of reward in it. There's yeah. a strange sense of of satisfaction being able to write a thirty thousand dollar check for more supplies. Right. Just because yeah. of a business that I built. Right. For more, yeah. you know, to write to my tooling company and, and say, I need, I need these bits here. And um, yeah, I, yeah. Just paid I mean, that's, that's incredible, but I think you're right. You know, that $7,000 check to St. Jude is going to impact so many families in so many different ways. It's incredible. And right. that's exactly where I would like to be at some particular point in my, in my business where I'm not, I can make more donations and I can make more of a difference. I would love to be in a place of that stature. And and that's that's actually kind of it. I mean, Harold Mayberry is is the icon of what I do. If, if you haven't heard a story or I have have you, I interviewed him. He was a CNC brother. He suffered with PTSD for 50 years oh, after gosh. a military accident, right? Depressed. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, didn't have much desire to go on in life, right? 75 years old and, and, and he, and he, he found CNC, he was fighting with it and found IDC Woodcraft channel. And finally he felt somebody could, was teaching him the way he needed to be taught. He sent me an, a message. He said, Garrett, your, you have helped me more than all the pills and therapy ever have. Right. Aww. I mean, that's incredible. That is, that is incredible. Yeah. Right? So, uh, yeah, uh, two own builds. So just the first step. Stop thinking there's a limit on money. So, and the reason I bring money up, okay, in in this whole theme of why it feels hard to start a business is because we have to get our worth up. We we we. Yeah. When when talk about your experience on worth kate in this uh just in this whole business thing and trying to make things work and how you've gone kind of gone through it times you feel like you're throwing the computer out the window or the machine out the window <laughs> uh i mean i don't even know where to start that's it's been such a roller coaster with the entire 
with the entire process, learning everything that there is to learn about operating a CNC from knowing zero was very challenging and it took a huge, it myself seemed took a big hit because I was like, I hyped myself up. I said, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn this. And then I felt like every button I hit in the first three months was just like crash and burn, crash and burn. And I just was like, what have I gotten myself into? I'm wasting so much wood. I'm wasting materials, bits. I mean, you name it. But as I was telling you earlier, I could have not imagined a year ago or a year and a half ago that I would be saying, go sign up for my YouTube channel. I have a successful, some, you know, it's growing very slowly. I just got 500 subscribers. So thank you. Thank you to those that we have subscribed. That's incredible. I never, ever dreamed I would have 500 subscribers. Um, but I never thought that I would be in a place now where I'm saying, I can help teach Vectric when a year ago I felt like I was this big in a world that was huge, um, let alone being on a YouTube trying to learn how to run a really successful CNC business. I mean, holy crap. So from feeling like your, your self-worth is just in the trash can because you, you took a break from your business, you're, you know, you've got zero dollars coming in to trying to give yourself a little bit of a learning curve all the way over to finally starting to finally make it has been such a roller coaster. I mean, my self-worth was like, and now it's finally, you know, we're finally going back uphill again, which is fantastic. Uh, but you've, you've got a, a, you've got a revenue stream now, right? Teaching one on one, yeah. right? Yep. So, we, so we got going, something going on there, right? So, so that's something that's a win, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a huge win. It's been, right. um, yeah, same I mean, with a learning the, curve. Yeah, and same with you who's watching this. Uh, if you someone made a sale the other day, I was on Facebook, you know, forty bucks for a little sign, and you know, but but it's a sale. Right. Sometimes we don't see yeah. it in ourselves when we make that first sale. We don't always feel that great about it, but uh, but it's a yeah. sale and it's worth pat yourself on the back. I have but, learned to celebrate the moment that you're in. If you make a sale and you finish that sign, celebrate. Do a little happy dance. You know, like I said, 500 subscribers. That's like peanuts to some people. But to me, that's everything because right. I never imagined having a YouTube channel, period. Let alone having a CNC, let alone trying to teach people how to CNC. Holy so, crap. so the objective is to get up to a thousand subscribers and have 4,000 yep. hours of watch time in a 12 month period, which is super easy to do. It's getting the subs. Once you have that, then you can monetize the channel. And for yep. all who's watching, what monetization on YouTube is, is we then have the right to put ads into our, into our uh, channel. So Oof. on my videos, when you see an ad, uh, I have put that there. It's a way that I can monetize the channel. I certainly yeah. don't like to pollute my videos like some people do with ads because, yeah. you know, that's 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 a smaller stream of income. But if you work it up enough right now, I make uh, um, my monthly estimate right now is one thousand two hundred dollars from you from YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. that's a, to a lot of people, maybe, you know, more your um Avatar, retired people, um, maybe more on more of a fixed income. I mean, that could be that could be substantial for someone right. doing that. Right. So, so how can we turn this into CNC for who's watching this? Is to think on in terms of how you can create uh, things that you can continuously create. Where can you find a demand that's going to be a continuous demand? You know, um, yeah. it's not just stores and stuff like that it's other places that i mean i'm kind of drawing a blank but there's there's lots of different ways right i, I found someone who's making something for a factory making products that the factory is selling okay i want to bring this one in yeah from gary okay. 
really how much effort do you want to put into your work if you can't imagine your success <laughs> right so in other words in other words you you have to work on seeing success when you can see success outside right mm -hmm. and so, instead of seeing someone who's successful as a asshole right uh or someone who's ripping off the rest of the world um if you can see that yeah. that means you're putting success inside of you right yeah. and i'm going to tell you this one thing everybody i want you to listen to this one thing there is a stupid amount of money out there right and yeah it can fall into our laps or it's going to fall somewhere we might as well get our yeah. share of the pie right and it doesn't have to yeah. be big right but 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 the it's not money mindset it's it's wealth mindset really is what we're getting to i like that it's wealth mindset not yeah. you're chasing a dollar because that's you're never going to get anywhere right right you can't you're chasing money you never catch up with it uh do you do in-person mentoring uh i'm learning vectric so i guess that's so kate i think that's is, you will you well know, i don't right now i used to do one-on-ones but i am uh there's just too much going on in idc woodcraft it's a growing business like it, so i am moving further and further away from selling my time all right yeah. uh this is my mentor telling me what to do all right <laughs> And, and yeah. that's something that's something that's been hard for me to let go of is making myself available to teach. But yeah. Richard, Kate is there and she does one on ones. So yeah. Kate, Kate will 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 help you with Vectric. Uh, it is paid service, right? And how do they get hold of you, Kate? Rise and shines uh, DIY DIY wood signs. Rise and, Rise and shine DIY. DIY wood signs at gmail.com okay so, all right yeah so very cool very cool um russell's gone to a lot of entrepreneur conferences uh one thing he has not had until he's gotten here the word is avatar that's uh interesting right yeah that's interesting. People always say, find your market. Who's your ideal customer? Mm -hmm. So most general level entrepreneurs don't um, think about avatar. That's why businesses hit a level and they kind of just plateau because they haven't truly defined their market. And once you've defined your market, Right, and you understand that market's mindset, then yeah. then you know how to talk to them. You know what they want. You know their pain points. You know what they uh, what they want to get to, and you can speak the emotional language to them. You yep. And, and when you can do that, right, uh, Russell, I if 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 you weren't here, it was two sessions ago. So it'd be episode four, right, that we did. Um, where yeah. I don't the know avatar the avatar work. Yeah, we did avatar work, spent an hour and a half. Your ideal it. customer, I think, is what it is. Yeah, it, it's the ideal customer. And it's very specific, and it's ultra important to do that. Uh, because without it, you, you just, you, you have too broad of a spectrum. You don't have a, a, a good enough. They say you can, uh, they got the pond. I, I can't remember, but it's a pond. What you said, you went wide, right? You're going yes. wide. When you go so wide in business, which is what most of us start out doing, making, we just make a bunch we of do. stuff. Um, yeah. That's wide. We don't have a market. So that's when we're selling to everybody. We can't get deep. And then, then you have the kind of deep puddle that's, that's narrow, right? And um, uh, yeah. then we, we know a little bit more. We've zoned down. But what we want is the narrow and deep. We want the well. Right. And that's what the avatar work gets us. Right. Yeah. And then what happens? I struggle the magic, a lot. Yeah. The thing, the thing that avatar Russell and everyone else is why we do it. The hard thing that most people have is to think we're thinking one individual, we are finding one particular individual. We're defining that person. And the reason we do that is we just learn the psychology of them. Once we get down to that psychology, 
the pains, the, the wants, the things that's blocking them from what they want. And mm -hmm. then once you get it, and Kate, you had that big aha moment at the very end, is then suddenly you see, oh, wait, that's not one person. There's a bunch of people that have this problem, right? But you yes. know the group. You know the group that they're in. So avatar yep. work is vital, vital. Um, yeah. All right, Kate, you want to pick one up? We're going through. We're going through comments right now. Um, um, I like what uh, B Twin says. Uh, Eight thirty three. Um, nobody ever got rich, rich punching a clock except for the guy that owns the clock. Boy, my dad told me that so many times. <laughs> I cannot tell right. you how many times I heard my dad say that. Right, right. But you know, it's neither here nor there. We are here now, learning how to build a business. And building a business is not an overnight event, right? Oh, Unfortunately, many of us come into this and thinking that it might be an overnight event. And it's, but the good thing is, is if you just get a machine, you learn how to make a few things, and then you get just post on Facebook, you'd be surprised. I'm telling you. And if you don't believe in <laughs> Facebook, I'm, I'm telling you, get used to it. This is the way people, this is where people hang out at. Suck right. it up. And this is, where, this is where half your friends hang out at, too. So, yeah. And, um, Kara, listen, Tim, on his end, my, my audio is blocky. Understandable. Okay. Um, I, you know what? I think I know why. Hold on. I think it's because it's tied in with my phone as well. I'm going to shut the phone down. Um, well, while you're doing that, I see a couple other people. Um, Tammy just subscribed to Kate's channel. Thank you. Appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dion, Kate, I Tammy, watched Tammy, several Tammy Rise and Shine. That, uh, yeah, Tammy had that awesome comment uh, a few weeks ago. She wanted to ask you about Ivanka. Ivanka is. Uh, yes. My yeah. avatar. Yep, Ivanka is your avatar. She does said, she does feel, does feel she feel guilty? guilty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still and think guilt. about that. I was actually thinking about it earlier today. Right. And guilt is her blocker. Her guilt is she's pulling herself away from her family to try to, to try to win at her game. So she's torn between what she wants and what she needs to do as a mother. Yeah. Like my son tonight, he was, uh, that's, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh when my dog was barking earlier. My son, he's 13. He literally was holding up a piece of paper like this in my shop window. And it said, can I light the fire? Um, because so he we earlier today we set up his tent um in the backyard we live on six acres and he's got the fire going and he's like can we do some more so we can just hang out in my tent and you know just we'll just hang out and i was like yeah buddy but it's wednesday and he's like oh yeah you got your live you know but he's just so excited for me like he's just super excited that i'm doing this that i'm trying to grow my business so that like you know that warms my heart that he's He's seeing mom grow. He's seeing me do things, which is so exciting. But and isn't that what we ultimately? I still want feel guilty. All right. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that what we ultimately want to be? Is to be the leader so that our kid do better than we did. Yeah. All right. We want yeah, them to that's, be. That's exactly what I want. All right. And the only yeah. way we can truly do that is by example, and by example is not always easy. <laughs> No, I've sacrificed God. lots of time with my grandkids and my daughter. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, anyone you want? Um, there's Alps Craft um, Set. Yep. Yeah. This one. <laughs> Sounds like me. in order to be successful, make lots of money, you have to have a fair amount of money to start out with. As the saying goes, it takes money to make money, and that is not a true statement not in today's world okay so, um we have so many free resources to to get ourselves out there yeah you got to buy a cnc machine if that's what you want to make money on right but once you right. get that you, you you find a platforms maybe there but we have youtube we have facebook we have instagram we have tiktok We've got all these platforms. They all work a little bit differently in order to generate business. But my daughter, my daughter has an entire cabinet full of these coffee mugs uh, that she buys that someone on TikTok just shows them putting 
epoxy colors on it and they'll put names on the cups oh, yeah. and she has a buttload it's like i mean she can't stop buying them right and and yeah. so this person started a hobby and they just started shooting videos and voila they started getting orders right yeah and i see so many people like that and i i just am like blown away at how successful that these things have become but yeah, I actually have an epoxy cup with my logo on it. So I need to actually have her make her new one because I changed up my logo. All right. So, well, <laughs> so you, wanted, you, you saw this. Why did, what, what was your thought that made, grabbed your attention? Um, you know, on, on the opposite of you, I felt like, yes, it, it really does. Especially in this particular space. Um, there's a lot of tools that, you know, you need. Um, I know a lot of people say, you know, if you don't have a CNC, it's what it's, you know, it's not woodworking, but it is because a CNC only does so much. It doesn't like, you know, do everything else. So you have, you do have to have a lot of tools and it does take some money to, to make some money. I mean, you got to buy the wood, you got to buy the tools, you got to buy the machine, you got to buy the bits, you got, you know, there's a lot that gets wrapped up in it. But if it's something that you want, you can save up for it. Or I know like Onefinity, they now have like a finance program if you want to finance it to try. But I also know um, one of my favorite people um, on Instagram, he's a retired Marine and he's reached out to me when he first got his machine and I've been working with him. And he used to, he makes these really cool like uh, whiskey barrels and he cuts them out and he does all these different um, things. But I, he's like, well, I don't, you know, I want to make some more money with my CNC. And I said, you know, well, let's expand how we can do that. You know, let's start thinking outside of the box, engraving the tops of them or, you know, adding a custom plaque or something to it. Cause he's a really good woodworker, but you know, I told him, I said, if you want to pay off your machine, let's start thinking a little bit outside the box on how you can do that. But mm. still, still takes some money to make some money yeah but it doesn't take a whole lot it really doesn't because what you can sell what you can give away for free and start getting revenue back from is your knowledge right okay you've got a skill yeah. we all have a skill in something and oh, if yeah. you share that if you share that skill and you know people are looking for answers then then mm -hmm knowledge is not something you lose right and, and if you if you just share the skill right you don't have yeah. to have you don't have to spend any money for that except for your cell phone right your monthly cell phone bill shoot a video <laughs> of your cell phone right but <laughs> think of this think of this yeah my, my neighbor across the way okay he has a 3d printer cost him 150 bucks and he sells parts off of it he, he makes parts and he sells them okay that's pretty cool wood Wood. You want free wood? Go to a construction site and dig through the dumpster they got there. There's all kinds of two by fours and boards laying in there that you can glue together and 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 yeah. make into a big board, right? It, it's resourcefulness yeah. is the word. All right. Yes. All um, right. I know we got a lot. Thank um, you, Andrew. Bits are awesome. Facebook user said the app is awesome. Cool. Your bits are awesome. So I, I I I like the engagement that that you that our, our brothers and sisters are giving here. This this is yeah. good dialogue because one of the things I want to see when we start to comment back and forth to each other, if we're trying to prove to each other our position, right, or if we think that someone else has a different, it, it first of all, it's just where we're at. And we, yeah. at the end of the day, we have to expand and realize people are just in their place. And, and as a collective, we want to raise yeah. everybody else up. But we can only raise other people up to the level that they are willing to be raised up, right? And so right. It's, it's up to each of us individually to become more and more receptive uh, to, to, to these different things. So the, the financial yeah. mindset is a very hard mindset to wrap yourself around. It took me a couple of years to really change my financial mindset, right? But we have yeah. to become we financially uh, wealth-wise, 
uh, and all that, we have to become that inside first. So we have to look at ourselves, right? We have to become yeah. mindful to ourselves and what we think. And so, again, Absolutely. going back to this whole, going back to this, why it feels hard to start is if if we had created our business in our minds already, the business will build by default outside, right? Because yeah. What we are gets created in our world, right? We, it just you just happens. have to start. You right, right. Have to take that first step because if you're not taking that first step, you're just sitting idle. You're just sitting on an idea. And I have a huge idea that I have been working on that is, uh, ooh, it's scary. But every day I think about it, I'm like, okay, this is going to work. This is going to work. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So, I just have to. Yep. So, so brothers and sisters, Kate is the type of entrepreneur that wants to get up high. And she, in order to do it, she has to <laughs> she has to see something that she's scared to death of. Right. And, and, and she's yes. going to have to go into it. Right. And that's what she's talking about right now. Same with me. But my mentor's asking me to do. I'm scared to death of it because I have to let go of other things in order to make it happen. Just like you do. Right. But at the end, yeah. is there's something inside that makes you know that, I mean, your spirit told you this, right? So, so it's like you had yeah. that moment. So you know that, it, that yeah. it will work. Yeah. And it's not, um, it's something where it's like, I've been saying this whole video, it's very create it once and then keep growing from there. Um, but that need is always going to be there as I see the market is, that's what the market's telling me. And it has the potential to be something gigantic. And I am terrified mm -hmm. <laughs> of getting it yep. going, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's just that it's who I am. I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have it in me to not do it. Right. I study successful people and what they always say is if you're not scared to death, losing sleep at night, you're not, you're not thinking big enough. But that's a, that's a special so kind of, yeah, that's a special kind of entrepreneur. Uh, the CNC brothers and sisters, that's, that's we're what we're doing here is just working on the mindset, not just for Kate, but for you as well to understand that the thing that we have to get comfortable with ourselves that we're going in this direction. Right. And, and, enough yeah. of this things will start to just switch inside of you you'll get kind of an aha moment you know, hopefully when we're done talking about this your head's buzzing a little bit going, you know you just kind of reflect in and back and, and something's just kind of going yeah. i mean when we did the avatar work the next day kate you were like oh that God. right i could not i was just like circling i could not get out of that space i felt like I felt like I was in like a twilight zone. Like I was like doing things and doing my regular like stuff. And I was, I could not get out of my head and everything that we had talked about. Cause it was so intense and it was so deep. It was crazy. But now I have such a better understanding of where I need to be for my business and my customer and what I want to do now. It is like so painfully clear to me. It's just putting those actions, action steps into, into play, like hitting that little play button. All right. So, so what happened, what happened to you and what, what the, I hope is happening to our brothers as they're hanging, brothers and sisters as they're hanging out. And so, so mm -hmm. our, our, our context, what we have in our, in our minds, right? fits into a certain volume. So we'll just say into a glass, right? And so that's all we can see in the world. And that's all we can take in our, because our filters won't let any more in. But then we do this work and then it's the avatar working the end of the night, boom, something hit. And what happened was your glass <laughs> turned into a, into a pitcher, right? So your whole context yeah. expanded, right? And so that's, that's what, Absolutely. That's why these mentoring sessions for all who's listening seems so yeah. weird for CNC business, right? Because, because business is yeah. all up here. We have to shift our awareness up there. Yeah. And it's, it's insane oh. because 
you, you don't think about like just a small, like a woodworking business that would come all of this, like the niche, the avatar work, the targeted marketing, just all of it. You don't think when you're starting like a small woodworking business, how much bigger it can be. And that's what you have to do. You just have to keep dreaming bigger. Yeah. And it's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what you're doing. You're stretching brain muscles, right? We, we exercise, we work out, you know, we, we, we diet, we take care of our body and we, we, but one thing most of us neglect is the other muscle that really needs the exercise. Right. Yeah. Any, Mine's any been comments? getting a lot of work out lately. It has, it has. And the, the good thing is, is be, by virtue of this, I get a workout. Right? So it, it <laughs> well, that's take, good. It helps take me to the next level. Um, oh, goodness. All right. Let's see. So you know, we're looking at comments to see what we want to pull out here. There's so many comments, that, but I wish we get everybody. Uh, what Kate and I do, just so you know, when 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 we end this, we we scroll through those and we go, oh man, we missed that one. Oh, yeah, no. we didn't talk to that one. Chris Chris said making money is not a nine to five job. It is not. Not when you're an entrepreneur. Uh oh. Ah. Uh, Eli. What's a good way to get your spouse and kids to be part of your business? You work 50 to 60 hours a week and you're regular nine to five. So you just don't really work nine to five. You work on six, to, six to eight. Um, I'm trying to get my family to help sign ideas, but I'm having no luck. So this requires uh, what they call a closing techniques, right? We can't convince them without them seeing some benefit out of it right and so so yeah. so there has to be a gain in it for them in order to get them on board all right yeah um we don't have a lot of time left to really dive into because this is diving into a different thing a different area yeah. but there's in in sales right which as a cnc business owner that's what you're doing. You're moving into sales. And when I say that, everybody's going, oh, my God, I hate sales, right? Uh, you know, because what comes to our mind? Car salesmen. Okay. Yeah. Our, this is what this is about also, is we are not trying to sell to people. We are learning how to make them want to buy from us, right? And this is why we have yeah. to understand the psychology. So in Eli's case, if you're trying to get them in, you're trying to sell them, right? What you need to do is you want to find the, the way to make them buy on their own. As they say in business, nobody wants to be sold to, but everybody wants to buy something, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so this is where you're struggling at is, um, so we have to learn how to close them. This would probably, this would be a good subject for us to talk about. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. not there yet though with you. Yeah. Right. The other thing I would say, Eli is, uh, getting your family to help you with design ideas. I have been in this loop myself. What I want you to ask yourself is have, do you have a niche that you are looking at the designs for? Like, are you making flags? Are you making coasters? Are you making charcuterie boards? Are you personalizing them? Like, what, what is your niche for your design ideas? Try, if you haven't decided what your niche is, then I would, I would do that because then you're going to have a lot more luck telling your family exactly what you need for them to try and look for and, you know, make it a family Make it like a family affair, you know, sit down and do it together. You know, even if it's like just a total brainstorming session of like, you know, 30 minutes, say, okay, everybody grab your phones. We're sitting at the table. We're going to help dad come up with some stuff, but you have to be very intentional with what you want them to look for. Otherwise you're going to wind up with just random ideas everywhere. 
Well, here, here's another thought. So a guy I was mentoring a year and a half ago, Mark, and there's public on, on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. He wanted to get close to his daughter and spend time with her. And so what he did was instead of focusing on what his niche was, he got them engaged in what their friends might want. Mm. Right. And got them to thinking about how they could make money creating things in their world. So yeah. Eli, maybe you can get your kind of your mind thinking around that of, of what would, I mean, you kind of have to get your wife in on the game first to get your kids. Maybe you can get the kids in on the game, but, but you just kind of yeah. start starting that conversation and maybe open it up in a way at the dinner table where you're going, you know, I, I'm just really stuck on this thing. I don't know how to make this whole thing work right with, with the business. I'm yeah. not really clear. What would your guys friends like to have, you know, how, how would that look? And, and, Right. So what you're doing is now you're asking open ended questions specifically and and, mm -hmm. and get them kind of engaged. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have friends, close friends, ask them about their close friends. These are people they care about. So they know them. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and what, what would they want? What, what kind of things? And maybe we can make something for them. What do you say? Do you think they'd like that? Right. And so get yeah. them into it on a playful way. Uh, your wife, you know, it's uh, what's special to her. Make something special for her. But, but find that. But that's just my thought, Kate. What? Yeah. No, I I think that's I think that's a very um, a really great idea. Um, I know Eli. I'm not sure or how long you've been in the business, um, but I would say, you know, making stuff for making stuff for your wife, and then like what Garrett said, have her post that on Facebook and show it off. You know, your grandkids. Um, I know what I did to kind of kickstart my business up a little bit was I made a lot of teacher gifts because um, my when my kids were still in middle school, I made a ton. I made some really um, cute wooden signs. I think they're on my Instagram, um, but it says, you can't scare me. I teach, I teach middle school. And so, and it was just a profile, like a, like a profile cut out. And then I, you know, painted them black and I made 10 of them or I think actually I think I made 10 or 12 of them because um, each one of my kids had six teachers, but I was like, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. And then they loved them. And then I started generating a little bit more revenue off of that. And, you know, there's a lot of things to do, but if you're struggling, I mean, we're coming up on the end of the school year. So, you know, I know my daughter, she has been harping on me here. I don't know if I've got it back here or not. Um, oh, this is going to sound really, really goofy here, but I was fooling around with some little coasters. Do you see these little coasters? They're like, um, yep. they're just like silicone molds. I bought them at Michael's and I bought some dried flowers and my daughter wants to make all of these for her teachers, but she wants to use the cricket and put her teacher's names on them. Is that something really I want to do? Not really, but it's a way to bond with my daughter and it gets her ideas running too. So, you know, I, uh, in my mind, yeah. family's everything. So. Yeah. If you, if, if, if you make something for your wife, she posts on Facebook and someone says, I want one. She, she can go, hey, guess what? Victoria wants one of these things, right? <laughs> now, now, you know, then she's got a little bit yeah. more, more ownership because she's kind of responsible for making that happen. So some food, yeah. some food for thought for you. Uh, yeah. Essentialist. Who else? Who else would you like to? Uh, there's uh, other people that have responded to Eli. Gave him some suggestions. Thank you. Yeah. Richard just bought a long mill, 30 by 48. Still waiting for it. That. Excellent. And uh, Gary has had two successful businesses. Uh, in a professional career, retired, and while well, your previous endeavors were profitable and fulfilling, you've been happy to move on and try something new. On, yeah, um, yeah, I we all got to. We all have to. If we feel we actually plateau in life, which you know, or come to some kind of abrupt change like retirement, and and uh, yeah. things change, or or in your case, the kids are getting older and not so much mommy, mommy anymore. It's like okay, one's dinner. Come on, feed me. I gotta go. You know, my yeah. friends are waiting for me. Um, yeah. ATM that, or a ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Oh, thank you. Dion also said something to uh, Eli. So, Eli, you got quite a few things there, um, uh, quite a few comments. Jack yeah. had 40, Jack in the shop had 549 subs. You know, when it comes to YouTube videos, it, it does, you don't have to make it complicated. You don't have to, you don't have to plan it out. You don't have to do B-rolls. I do a lot of B-rolls, stuff like that in mine. You know, mine a lot of times are very structured, but, but just to make content, you don't, you don't have to just turn on your camera and talk. Right. Yeah. Um, do you know what uh, Rumble is? Because it's Jack in the Shop 849, or Jack said. Um, At 849? 859, I'm sorry. Um, it says started putting. Sorry, uh, my son's in here. Oh, Jack's yeah. on my camera room. I'm not sure what Rumble oh, is. Rumble is like a YouTube, but it's up, up in uh, Canada. Oh, uh, okay. So it's this little tiny thing. I've thought about uh, uh, Rumble actually approached me. They wanted me to be on their platform. It's oh, kind nice. of small, but uh, but I I opted out of it just because I don't have the bandwidth to post on all these platforms. But apparently, I, Rumble does have some kind of quick transfer from YouTube, so I may look back into it. Okay. So, so that's what Rumble is. Nice. Uh, uh, Zoom market yourself to the correct customer. It truly works. People who know the importance of value are worth selling to. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about that too, the value of customers, right? Yep. You have your you have your dollar store value. The ones who are always looking for the discount. I never have enough money. They're bad at me. You know, bad, you know they yeah. have uh, not just... Uh, Walmart, Kroger, and Trader Joe's. Jungle, Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Joe's. You say that all. You say that every time. It what is up. Jungle Joe's anyway? Jungle I know it's a Jim, store. Jungle Joe's is a bouncy house place you take your grandkids. Damn, it's like you think I'd know that. Jumpy Joey's or something like that. I don't know. Jungle yeah. Joe's. They have nine million of them, but yeah, uh, it's like a jungle well, themed uh, place. Uh, so to, to, um, builds, uh, avatar breakdowns are amazing. I love doing avatar breakdowns. I love doing avatar work. Right? It's, uh, it's pretty profound yeah. once you get into it and you figure it out. You're like, holy crap. So, uh, hello well, from Germany. I saw somebody popped on from Australia. Yeah, Southern excellent. India. Wow. That's some pretty cool peeps from around the world. Right. Um, so I can't pronounce the name, but uh, acrylic sheet can be used on the CNC machine. Yes. Yeah. You typically want to use, you, you'd want to use cast acrylic. You can cut regular acrylic, but it's much more flexible. It's harder to get the chips cleaned up. Uh, it, the chips melt up easier, faster. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Because we are at the bottom of the hour. Free wood comment thinking. you made. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Free wood comment. You're not above dumpster diving. Scored three and a half cabinets today. Multiple wood pieces. Yep. Go for nice. it. Nice. You know, I will tell you, I have a friend of mine. He actually told me, I actually go to church with him. Um, he told me that it, a lot of the mills, like they, because they mill so much wood, they just have cutoffs and then they were just like, here, take them, whatever you want. Yeah. So, I mean, they got to get rid of them. Otherwise and they're just going to be piling up forever. Yeah. You can get exotic wood that way too. That's what yeah. Mark was getting. He was getting exotic end pieces and you're making cutting boards out of it. That's pretty cool. Uh, do I recommend starting out with LLC business and then grow it? No, I would say get get your sell a few product first. Make sure you got the make sure you got the market going and you got a little bit of a business. Yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, because I mean LLCs don't cost that much. Um, mm -hmm. I think mine was like a thousand dollars, but I did it through an attorney, and I have the okay. a book and articles and corporation and all the things that like he yeah. broke it down for me. I. It's money well spent. Yeah. So, uh, oh, Carol, me. I'm a, 
Which one? Harold Snyder, 916. Okay. So I'll get moving. Can't figure out a business name. Can't narrow down avatar. Can I just start doing something without these things? Just make something and put it on Facebook. All right. Just make something and get it. You can't get business if you don't get eyes on you. Oop. Sorry, my yep. chair went down. <laughs> so, my so, heel hit the lever uh, on the bottom of the chair. Yeah. Harold, I mean, this this is this is pretty typical of those who are just getting into it, right? There's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But you have, you know, if you've been watching a few of these, then you've got a good idea, right? Uh, you're, you're already getting yeah. some expansion on this. But at the end of the day, make something and get it out there. Just, just get it where people can see it. And then make something else. Get it out there where people can see it. Friends, family, Facebook. If you have yep. Facebook. Yeah. Start somewhere. Just even if you're working in the background on those things, start one thing at a time. Uh, um, I'm thinking like 921 somewhere. There's some other things. Wait. Like, uh, there's a few people talking. Some are talking to Tim. There's Chris. Is this one you're talking about? Yeah, that's how I was trying to read through some of them. Um, and CNC machine owners look for a custom made model for which they require outside help. Where do they start for designers in Facebook and web pages of individual designers? Okay, so, so you want to get someone to design some of your models. So you can go into Facebook. Um, Many, many people in the Facebook groups. There's a lot of you. You, you can ask out there and right. talk to them. All right, that's the easiest, fastest way. Uh, you can go to Fiverr, Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. -E yes. That's paid resource. All right, and you can get your pick of designers from there. And just do a do a search for for STL designers if you're on 3D models. All right. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're pretty Facebook, good. Yeah. Yeah, I did have one. It, 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 he didn't do a good job. <laughs> that came off fiber. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to pay them if they don't do a good job. All I right. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Lazio drove through my town a couple of years ago, drove right past my shop. Oh. It says, uh, it's F8TH01. Wish we could meet up one day, Garrett. Come up to Quebec. Quebec. <laughs> Quebec. Yep. That would be cool. I got a friend up in Quebec, someone that's in my, my entrepreneurs community. Um, okay. So at this point, yeah. hey, Sam's there. Hi, Sam. Oh, I didn't see Sam was on here. Hello. Um. Yes, yeah, so Sam. Sam said, "Yep, yeah, absolutely. Laser focus, oh. consistently persistent, and believe." Yes. So, so th thank you, Sam, for bringing that up. Right. Uh, rules are, you know, is faith in yourself. You have to believe that you're going to get there, right? And and um, you have to be persistent, right? Because mm -hmm. because if if you don't have the belief. Or the, you have to have faith because as an entrepreneur, someone who as we are, we're diving into business. We we don't know where we're going, but we have to have faith that's going to work, right? Yeah, and absolutely. That faith, as long as we hold on that faith, we'll never stop. Um, mm -hmm. The belief is what gives you when you're looking at someone else and you're saying, you can't you can't knock me down, right? This is where I'm going, right? Yeah. I'm going to make it, right? And of course, the persistence is 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 the the driving factor. So thanks, Sam, for bringing yeah. that up. Didn't even know you were out there, man. Um, <laughs> and he just got monetization status on Facebook. Cool. Uh, didn't know Facebook had monetization status. Okay, so 
Ladies, if you are into creating space, sign up to Kate's Facebook group, Women Who CNC. It is women only. And then if you are wanting help with Vectric, Kate will do one-on-ones. Yep. Your e- email, how do they get hold of you? Uh, rise and shine, DIY wood signs at gmail.com. All right. And what else? What else we have? I think that's about it. Yeah, sign up for CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe to Kate's YouTube channel, Rise and Shine Wood Signs. Yeah. Help her get check to out a, some of the stuff. Yep, help her get to a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Trying, 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 trying. I'm gonna be putting out some more videos, hopefully ripping up my spoil board this week. Ooh. Well, right. I'll, I'll give you my. I'll next. give you my. I'll give you as we leave this. I'm going to give you a little rule of thumb. We don't use the word try. We don't. We use the word might. We don't use the word maybe or I want. Right. We okay. don't. Absolutely don't use the word someday, and we don't talk about us getting old. We don't say I'm old. Right. We're just yeah. more. We're just more experienced. Anybody, everybody who's out here, I know some of us are, are sixties, seventies. You're not old. Get that word out of your language, All right? Our, our bodies are. We're more experienced. That's the way we <laughs> yeah. want to look at it. All right? Seasoned. I, I am younger in heart, in mind, and spirit than I ever was in my first fifty years. Yeah. Right. I would say as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that too. All right. I guess Jack said, do or do not. There's no try. Right. Like Henry Ford said, another good, very popular saying, either you can, if you think you can or can't, you're right. I love that. Yeah. I love it. That, that sounds like a good something to like carve out and put on my. There you go. Uh, okay, that's all I want everybody to carve out and post on Facebook. If you think you can or can't, you're right. <laughs> Henry Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Let's let's wrap this up, sister, brothers and sisters. Yes. Uh, uh, we got to a lot of comments, but there's still a ton we didn't get to. And yeah. I do apologize. Um, thank you. And next week. Um, Hey, I had a question. Um, Schmidtville, Schmidtville Creations just popped on. Yeah. Um, what is what is your name? Schmidtville Creations, like the actual yeah. the actual name person's name. Yeah, like I was just wondering what their name is, who they are. Picking a logo is a stumper. Yeah, so I'm I'm very anal about logos. Right, you want your logo to well, he's his name is Ellen. Her name, Her name. is Ellen. Ellen. Okay. Yeah, Ellen Worker. Okay. Let's talk about logos real quick. Then we'll then we'll knock it off. Got this, it. this logo that you see right here. Okay. This went through many mm-hmm. many renditions. It went through many eyes. Uh, yeah. It cost me about fifteen hundred dollars for the designers um, to get the feel that I wanted. Right. So think about what you want your business to represent to the world. Most of us, we create our business names and our logos based on what we think. Sam Coleman's got a pretty cool logo, right? He's got that on his video. On his video, he's got the spinning saw and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, Coleman designs. Yeah, yeah, and and it has a sense of uh, action and power, right? so you want to think about what you want your business to represent to the eyes of the customer. This is why we do the avatar work, right? Once you know your avatar, yeah, then then you know what's going to kind of push their buttons, right? And what they're going to be attracted to. Yeah. Yeah. It was really hard for me to, to pick a logo. I mean, I went through several different, I had the sunflower for a while and I really didn't know what that rep like that wasn't really representing what I have. And now I have like, you can kind of see over here, it says rise and shine and it's like a mandala, but it's carved and it's the, uh, 
it's like the sunrise rising over a mountain. Um, so rise and shine, but you know, it's, it's been hard. It's, you know, I, I totally get where you're at. Sam says he went through six. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. A logo the, you can the, grow with. Yep. The, the, the video logo that I have, you know, where it's got my, my, my logo and the router bit flies in and it'll yeah. boom. Right. And it's I actually very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole idea of that logo is Ford tough kind of feel. Right. And so everything. Yeah. Is, centers around that so so ellen um think about what you want your customer to feel when they see your logo yeah yeah that's true i don't think i really didn't think about that mine now is it's like it's got the because in the middle of the logo it says rise and shine custom carvings and now i have now my upgraded logo from this one is actually um, it has that the words taken out and it's just like a river that flows and it kind of all comes in and it says rise and shine wood signs, um, premium, premium quality, custom carved. So, you know, yep. but in now business, I'm probably going to change it again. Right. In business, image and perception is everything. Yeah. Behind that comes the quality, right? But they have to be attracted to your image. They have to be. They have to see you have a perception that you are the one, right? So image and perception behind that comes quality. So that's what your logo, your name has to represent. Okay. Yeah. Let's say goodbye. It's been a great time. And we will next week, what we're talking about, because we usually figure it out that, you know, we kind of, we talk through the week and yeah. see where Kate's kind of struggling at. And it kind of comes together as to what will be the next subject we'll talk about next week. If yeah. you haven't watched these before, then, uh, check out some of the other episodes. Take a minute to push the like button and sign up to Kate's group. Women. Sign yes. up to Kate's group. Women who see and see on Facebook. And with that, yes, we please. are going to check out Hasta la Vista, brothers All and right, sisters. See you guys. Happy seeing and seeing.